One of the skills that we teach students at Compass Rose is the eight-step healthy confrontation model based on the work of Dr. John Townsend. So um, the idea is that teens begin to be able to better use their voice and instead of tantruming or yelling or rebelling, that they're able to confront even authority figures in healthy ways, or they're able to say no to negative peer influences, or um, they're able to just set healthy boundaries with, again, peers or, or even adults, using their voice in a more mature and adult way. So what we want to do with parents is help parents to be able to know how to practice being confronted and then responding with grace and with authority. So again, we, we want to build in the girls this ability to use their voice in healthy ways. And we all know it's no fun to be confronted, whether it's our boss confronting us, a peer, a spouse, or our child. We don't want to be confronted. And so our natural tendency is to be defensive, maybe even to roll our eyes or to be dismissive of the input that someone else is giving us. Um, these are all very normal responses. And so in order, for us as, as parents and staff and adults to build in our teens the ability to use this healthy confrontation skill to the best of their ability, it's really helpful if we respond in ways that are encouraging and growth producing and validating instead of dismissive. So we're going to talk about for each of the steps that the, that the students are implementing in healthy confrontation how do we respond in a way that is healthy and modeling for them? So we'll take these one by one. The first step of the healthy confrontation model is the I am for you stance. So this is very similar to the beginning of the four anchors of boundary setting, where again, as parents, if we're going in to set a boundary, we're starting with that grace, that I am for you stance. So in the same way, the healthy confrontation model, if you're going to go in and confront someone and have a difficult conversation it's important to come in with that grace, I am for you stance again. So when receiving confrontation as parents, it's important to go into it as well and match that warm and open posture that hopefully your daughter is displaying. So be warm and be open. Notice if your daughter says, I want to have a hard conversation, I want to confront you. Now again, they're a teen, they're an adolescent, and so it may feel like the skill is in an adolescent stage. They're not going to be perfect. They're not going to be polished, but notice hopefully that they're trying. Um, and so as they're mustering their strength to be as warm as a teen girl can when confronting their parents, um, you muster the strength to also be warm and open in that as well. So rather than coming across with your own defensiveness and shutting down and um, being dismissive, um, put yourself in a stance of being open and wanting to hear what they have to say. The second step is that they're going to state the conflict or situation that needs to be confronted. So they're going to put clearly into words, what is it that I'm here to talk to you about today? What's the issue? What's the situation? And so again, your response in this step is to be aware of your own tone and body language and listen, <clears throat> seeking to understand, as opposed to just listening enough to argue back. Our tendency as humans, we are wired often to just argue back. And so if somebody brings one point of view, I'm thinking of the other point of view and I want to counter back and forth. So instead, you have to have this intentionality around really hearing what's underneath it, what are they trying to communicate, what, is, what are they needing, rather than me just listening just enough to think of my point um, and my defense. So be aware again, of your tone, how you're coming across. Um, and this is good to get feedback from others who care and can be open and be honest with you. Does your tone come across as dismissive, as harsh, as closed? Or is your tone inviting? And same thing with your body language. If you're scowling, if you're sitting with your arms crossed or you know, looking down on them, that's very different than if you're a more open um, and soft posture. The third step the student is going to do is owning their contribution. So they're going to say, I know that I have maybe contributed to this problem in the past. Like I haven't always been responsible or hopefully they'll state something pretty specific that I engaged in this behavior. And so I understand that has made you engage in this behavior. So they're going to own some part of the scenario. Your response to that will be to listen and thank them for their ownership. 
validate it, take it seriously, um, really appreciate that they are willing to own and acknowledge their part in it. And that's all. Don't go further in blaming them or making that into a tirade or a lecture. Just um, thank them and validate and heighten the fact that they have that awareness and that insight and are willing to own their contribution. The fourth step for the student is to hear the other person out. So this is the chance that they would listen to you. They may say something like, so mom or dad, what do you think about this? And what do you have to say? I recognize that maybe there's a different point of view and I want to hear your thoughts on the subject before we go on. So resist unloading. Their expectation could be that now they're turning over the conversation to you and it's going to go a whole different direction. Um, but resist, again, the opportunity to lecture or go on a tangent, but instead um, validate, add some brief perspective. So you might say something like, yeah, I, I understand and I hear where you're coming from and I see it a little bit differently. Here's what I would add. I, I see this perspective too. Um, and then again, no tangents or lectures, just some brief perspective. That really can be helpful if because people, when approached respectfully, can really hear other perspective. And it can be very enlightening for them to say, oh, I never thought of it that way. I didn't see I was stuck in my own view. I never thought about you as a separate person having your separate views. So if you can do it respectfully and calmly, they really can take in some perspective as long as you don't go off on a tangent or lecture. Um, number five, then the student will request a change with a one, one solution. So their job is to come to the conversation with some sort of an idea of what they're looking for that, and it won't be all one sided. Hopefully it's not just, so now you have to do this from now on parent. Instead, it's going to be, I've thought about this. And what I think is if I do this, maybe you could do this differently. And it's kind of this win, win back and forth where everybody's giving a little, so your response to that will be to notice and praise the agency and initiative. Maybe you won't agree and maybe you think it's actually not a great solution or you think maybe they didn't put enough thought into it or it doesn't give enough on their end or whatever. Um, but notice and praise the agency and initiative. Thank you for thinking about that. That's awesome. That's so mature that you came with that idea and you've put this thought into it and you're willing to give. Um, and then it's okay to offer some tweaks and seek to find that middle ground. There's a little bit of, of push and pull that can come into this part of the conversation. Sometimes parents find that students um, or teens actually give more than they think, that when they come up with this win-win, they're actually you know, willing to give more than what they would have even come up with on their own as, as parents um, asking of the child. So um, just be willing to find that middle ground and see what you can come up with as you um, offer some tweaks, go back and forth, praise their initiative. And then number six is natural consequences if necessary. So this always sounds a little bit differently or strange when you're talking about confronting an, <clears throat> an elder or an authority figure, uh, because we think about in a normal situation, if we're setting a boundary with somebody that's, um, you know, under our authority or a peer, we can say, if you don't listen, here's what I'm going to, here's what's going to happen. And here's what I'm going to do about it. However, with an authority figure, it, it can be similar in the sense of saying, look, mom and dad, here's what, what I've noticed and here's this um, thing that has been really bothering me. And I want to let you know that if, if you guys don't change and do this differently or if we don't find this middle ground or this solution, here's the impact. Like here's what it's going to keep doing to me. Here's how I'm going to keep responding to that. And so it's not a natural consequence in the sense of like giving somebody a consequence, but it's explaining the impact and it's saying, here's how I see this continuing to go if we don't find a resolution. So again, resist that defensiveness and hear what's going on underneath and don't take it as threatening, um, but just take it as really seeking to find a solution. And, um, and you again, resist that defensiveness to try to hear where, where she's coming from. And then the seventh state step is, another dose of that grace from the beginning and it's returning to I am for you stance. So she should end with something like, um, thank you again for listening. I'm really glad that we were able to have this conversation and she may like praise you guys for saying this went better than I thought. Thank you for being gracious with it. Thank you for listening. You guys are great. 
Um, or she may at least say, remember, like I wanted to have this conversation because I care about us as a family getting along. Um, so she'll somehow wrap up the conversation with a dose of grace and returning to that I am for you stance. Your job there is to stay warm, reciprocate, reciprocate that grace and thank them. <clears throat> you would say, thank you so much. You, I really appreciated your maturity and your attitude through this, you know, praise them for anything that you can find, um, from the conversation to be able to say, um, what you appreciate and, um, just continue to monitor your own warmth and your posture and your body language. And then the final step, step eight of the healthy confrontation model is that she's actually supposed to check back in about a day, 24 hours, give or take. And this is just to restate the issue and solution so that she knows that you heard. Because sometimes when we do a confrontation, um, we find that people go really defensive or people get stuck on a part of it or they didn't really hear. They just were, were stuck in, you know, kind of that fight or flight of being challenged or something. So it's important to go back and say, hey, I just wanted to know, A, to check back in and say, I, I'm really glad we were able to have that conversation. I really care about you and I'm thankful that you listened. And just make sure that we're still on the same page that like um, you you heard what I said or that we um, left on the same page. Maybe restate a little bit of the solution or issue that was discussed. So again, as she does that, as she checks back in, just reciprocate, stay warm. Thank you. Again, I yeah, it was a great experience. It was growing for me to be able to see you in that light and have you use your voice in that way. It impacted me and we're definitely... Um, you know, thinking about it or kind of following up on what we talked about. Just let her know, um, again, that, that you appreciate it and, and validate any part of it that you can. So I hope this was really helpful in looking at the steps that your daughter is learning to be able to um, manage. And I have um, some a sample script um, that I will pass out, um, send along with this video so that you can see what might that look like applied to a specific scenario and, and using some more language around um, what, what the child might say and what the parent might say. So I hope that's helpful. And again, give it a, give it a try and we'll talk to you later.